so these were the these are all attitudes and values so all these cultivation of the correct attitude and values cultivation of vairagya and sharanagati to bhagavan and developing the um, uh, overcoming the uh, what is that oh, oh ishvara bhakti was the fourth one and developing bhakti and prapadye sharanam aham prapadye all this was pointed out as a way to gaining an understanding of one's destination what is this destination that one is after that has to be crystal clear in the mind and until that is not clear all our priorities will make us spin in circles and so this destination uh, going to that padam anamayam amritam padam padam means goal destination what is that destination ishvara brahman which is the truth of one self alone all this was pointed out so now verse number 6 is going to point out the the description of that very destination what is this destination and how it is to be described is going to be pointed out in verse number 6 natal bhasayate surya bhasayate surya nashashanko na pavakah nashashanko na pavakah yat katva na nivartante was we have encountered in the kathopanishad in the form of that uh, mantra which is chanted during aarati what is that natatra suryo bhati na chandra tarakam same thing which is also here that is the here it is creatively uh, pointed out as the home of the lord address of bhagavan where does bhagavan live and then bhagavan if you want to know and the description is very very intriguing because lord krishna is a trickster little bit of a trickster figure oh i don't know if you'll be able to find it it's not that the sun shines there oh moonlit <laughs> moonlit planet or moonlit area na shashanka okay maybe we have some nice candle light dinner i'll have with bhagavan na pavaka no fire no source of light and to make matters still scarier yat gatva having gone there what happens nane vartante nobody comes back looks like a black hole that is at the center of every galaxy it has just a vacuuming effect it just swallows everything into it you can put so many things in it and nothing comes out the other hand this is what is the black hole time space everything it swallows up and so is bhagavan's abode like that no because in negating these sources of light we we cannot negate one thing what can we not negate the negator and who is this negator all light the one that is throwing the light or no light is all light the one that says there is no light is throwing the light on there being no light in a particular place at a particular time in short this whole verse is the deployment of anupalabdhi pramana in a very creative way anupalabdhi means what one pramana we had studied long back in the last janma <laughs> what was that cognition of absence anupalabdhi is there a pot in the palm of my hand na no why don't say because it is over there it is not here that is the main point it is not here what do i see i see the pot here in my head i see the pot because i have seen these teaching pots for the last so many months i know what they look like i see the pot in my head and what that which occurs in my head is not in your hand at this time 
This is anupalabdhi pramana, to deploy which two conditions must be always met. What are they? The absence of what? What is absent? You can't just say generally something, uh, general absence. What do you mean general absence? Absence of what? First question, it should answer. And the second thing which is important in the deployment of the Anubalabdhi Pramana is what? The absence and then of what? And where is it absent? So what is absent? Pot. Where is it absent? In the palm of the hand. You see, this is how Anupalabdhi Pramana is there. So here, Lord Krishna is saying, there, in a, in a particular place, the sun does not shine. So the place is there. The place is mentioned. And the non-shining of the sun, or the sun, sun either does not shine or cannot shine. And we have to put a small out in front of the sun. Cannot outshine. Ah. That is the idea. And what about the moon? Same thing. Na shashankaha. Shashanka means the one who has a rabbit imprint. So if you look at the moon, you see a rabbit there. A rabbit with the ears and everything. So shashankaha, no moon, no fire, no candles, nothing. So when the negator uses the anupalabdhi pramana and negates, what is left is the negator. And what is negator here? Shuddha Chaitanya. Chaitanya Swarupa. Chaitanya means light, not the kind of light. That's why the sun, moon and stars and everything are dismissed. Sun, moon, fire, etc. Because it's not that kind of a literal light. It's a figurative light that throws light on even the self-luminatory um, body, self-illumining bodies like the sun, moon, etc. Not the moon, but the sun, stars, fire, etc. Self-luminous bodies are themselves outshined by which presence? So, the eyes, my eyes are lit up by what? The sun. My eyes are lit up by the sun. I see the sun, but really when I see the sun, what do setting sun, okay? Don't think noon time sun. When I see the setting sun, then what am I doing? I am giving life to the sun. I am proclaiming the presence of the sun. Who, who is this I? It cannot be just the eyes. It is that consciousness, the Ishvara behind, the Ishvara Tattva, the consciousness behind the eyes, that is objectifying even the sun. And in the Taitriya also is that, Yaschayam Purushe, Yaschasavaditye, this person, the Aditya Saya Ekaha, it's all one. Because the light of consciousness outshines everything else. So this is my home. My home is not dark. My home is not like a place where you won't find any light. My home is just dazzlingly bright. My home is so bright that you won't know what to do with it. And in fact, it's not just my home. It is your home also. How can Krishna say it is your home also naturally? There is only one, one Chaitanya. And if that is Lord Krishna's home, that is everyone's home. Your home, my home, the home of all Jantus in the entire universe of names and forms, in all the galaxies, in all the planets, wherever they might be life, it is the home where the sun does not shine. The moon does not shine, stars do not shine, fire does not shine, thunderbolt and lightning does not shine. What shines? Everything shines, but it, it is outshined. It shines after. You shine, therefore it shines. And the absence of them also, you are the one who says, at night there is no sun, at least on this side of the, this side of the hemisphere. This side there is no sun. Because the earth is turned away. Who says? Who recounts the absence of the sun? 
The presence of that light alone recounts the absence of the sun. During the day, I can recollect the absence of the moon. I can see that the moon is not there. Similarly, that light of consciousness alone, that Chaitanya, from which all this has come, it is going to be told later. This is my abode. This is where I live. Taddhama paramam. Paramam means gaining, which there is nothing more to gain. Nothing more to gain at all. And the day and night depend on me. I am the one who objectifies this, the night. I am the one who objectifies the day. There is one very nice work, Krishna, Kar Krishna Karnamrita, very beautiful set of verses, stories of baby Lord Krishna. And baby Krishna says to his mother, Dehi Chashakam, give me, Chashakam means cup, glass, something. Give me a cup. Katham, why? The mother says, Patum Payaha, to drink milk. And the mother says, there is no milk now. And the baby says, no milk now? When does the milk, when will there be milk? When it is night, then the milkmaids will come and give the milk. Right now there is no milk. And then she started to do her work. Again she felt a tug at her sari. And the child is saying, baby Krishna is saying what? Dehi chashakam, give me a cup. Patum payaha, in order to drink milk. I told you there is no milk just now. I told you you have to wait until the, the child also asks, what is night? Says when you cannot see anything. And so the, then, uh, then uh, she looks at him, he has his eyes tightly closed and his hand like this. <laughs> it is night. Dehi <laughs> chashakam. Give me a cup, it's already night. <laughs> so, taddhama paramam mama. I am the one who makes the day. Why? Because I'm conscious of it. And see how quickly I made the night. Done. Close the eyes. What is there? No Vyavahara. No, no sun. No moon. No stars. But then there is one source of undeniable, non-negatable light. What is that? I. That I alone. Same thing we find. There is one uh, Ekash Loki. Swamiji referred to that a few weeks back. Ekash Loki, which is a nice dialogue between the teacher and the student. By what do you see during the day? Teacher asks. By the sun. By what do you see during the night? By the moon. What do you do when there is no moon? Amavasya. I see by the fire. Fire brand. Ulka. And then, what do you see when it is? pitch dark and then he says I see it through the mind's eye the mind's eye leads me so same way if it is pitch dark and somebody comes to the house it is let's say the whole place is dark and you can't tell them don't bang into the table it's over there don't bang into the chair but still somehow you can guide them a little bit to the left little bit forward, little bit this side and they follow and what is it that they follow, what is, what is it that makes them follow these instructions? It is that Chaitanya, it is that Chaitanya alone that, that is the governing principle of the whole universe. So from the standpoint of the universe, this is, a, this is an invincible, inviolable place of Great safety, this Shuddha Chaitanya, free of even thoughts, free enough to have thoughts, free enough not to have thoughts, free of forms, free enough to be in the form of various forms and names, free from all names, free enough to sport the names. Taddhama Paramam Mama, this is what is the Padam which the yogis strive through developing Viveka, Vairagya, Nirmana Moha, Jita Sangha Dosha, Adhyatma Nitya and Vinivritta Kamaha, Dvandvair Vimuktaha, Sukha Dukha Samyaihi. 
these amudhas this is the pada they want this is the the, the one that the yogis always love this is the ultimate truth which you need to o arjuna and by reference all of all of the us who are addressed you need to go after and so this is the the in the sixth verse the um, pada what is it that one is striving for that place of no pain no sorrow is what is talked about as the lord's house lord's ultimate abode then there is there are two topics which are going to come up in verses 7 to 11 one topic uh, and then 12 to 15 another topic first those two topics we to take together and say that in here the lord is giving his connection to and his uh, um, all pervasiveness with his expressing his all pervasiveness and availability in the jagat from verses 7 to 15 the lord is expressing his presence and availability in the jagat now there is a distinction from verses 7 to 11 the lord is expressing his availability in the chetana amsha of the jagat i e in all the jeevas how does the lord manifest in the jeevas and then from verses 12 to 15 the lord is expressing how he manifests in the form of the sentience in inanimate in sentient beings why why do why is this distinction because for two reasons one is the jagat itself is a is is a mix up a, a merger of chetana and achetana amshas the jagat has sentient and insentient things yes or no yes so and then so that's why this distinction is there second is where do i belong naturally i will say i am sentient right so then the insentient things do not have a problem say think you know because they don't have a problem they never think of themselves as away from bhagavan there is no alienation and there is no sense of uh, self identity as separate from the whole there is no free will I am in the insentient things. Therefore, there is no resistance. There is no fear. There is nothing there. They just simply are. But then, with regard to the sentient beings, not not all sentient beings. Which sentient beings? Human beings alone. With regard to the human beings, there is fear. There is resistance. There is all kinds of problems. And so, therefore, what? therefore it is it is it has to be mentioned separately so that the jiva the one the human jiva overcomes the resistance and sees oneself as bhagavan non separate from bhagavan and so first we deal with the lord deals with the uh, presence of ishvara in ishvara means satchidanandam brahma in the sentient the uh, in the sentient part of the jagat i e in the jeevas the 7th and the 8th verses should be read together otherwise they will not make any sense as we will see mamai vamsho jeeva loke mamai vamsho jeeva loke jeeva bhutas sanatana jeeva bhutas sanatana manashashtani indriyani कर्षति शरीर यदवाप्योद्यक्रमतीश्वर यद्युक्रमतीश्वर ही त्वयि तानि संयाति 
source of great jubilation for the Dvaitas and the Vishishta Dvaitas. They love this and they give this all the time as proof that you are separate and a little, a small, tiny fraction of Bhagavan. But really the word Amsha has two meanings. Part, a part also we can, we'll take it part by part. We can say part also. <laughs> But then it also means a beam, a ray, okay? And so the light. So it can be taken like that also. Part is also okay. Part means what? It's not a part as we see. You know, this is one fourth of Brahman is in me. No, not that kind of a part. Part means that which which is borrowed, a borrowed part. So the jiva is a mix-up, as we have seen in chapter 7, we have seen that in chapter 13, mix-up of prakriti, which is what? Insentient, and purusha, which is sentient. Sentiency is borrowed from chaitanya. Chaitanya atma, which is ishvara. Sentiency is not something that is that is inbuilt it's a borrowed light borrowed light of consciousness borrowed from bhagavan who does not become slim after giving this piece of piece 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 of light to everybody in the jagat becomes tiny little glow like a glow worm khadyota no because it is partless it is already all pervasive. So this borrowing does not mean like going to a bank and borrowing. No. Borrowed means just like I told you the story of the crow that went to the annual peacock convention. What did it do to get in? It was first not allowed to go in. What did it do? It borrowed some feather, <laughs> put it there and then went and danced there. Similarly, the jiva is shining in Ishvara's light all the time, but doesn't know, mistakes the light for itself, giving rise to various interesting materialistic philosophies, Charvaka, etc. We'll see that presently. But first, let us translate this. Mama eva amshaha. So, jiva loke in the world of mortals. Mama eva amshaha jiva bhuta sanatana. Who is this jiva? The jiva is myself alone. The jiva is myself. Then why do you say amshaha? Amshaha because here we have, what is that? Like even space, we have part space, which is because of the upadhi called part which is separate from what? Room space. And the separating factor is Mithya, definitely. So too, the Ishvara that is obtaining in the body-mind sense complex of the Jiva is as though conditioned by the Upadhi, by Jiva Upadhi. Dog Upadhi, Cat Upadhi, Human Upadhi, whatever it is. That becoming becomes the as though delimiting agent which conditions the body mind, the, the, the chaitanya, in, in a particular way, just like the pot space, small pot space, big pot space. This is, this is how we uh, look at it in the world. But really speaking, there is no such thing called pot space. In fact, space is not in the pot. Pot is in space. So this is how, so we can, so but from the standpoint of this verse to understand, when we say pot space, that means 
पॉट अवच्छिन्न आकाश है घटावच्छिन्न आकाश है पॉट स्पेस इट इज जस्ट ए उपल उपचारा उपचारा मीन्स वॉट ए काइंड ऑफ ए वॉट इज दैट कॉल्ड फिगरेटिव फिगरेटिव स्पीच उपचार इट्स नॉट टू बी टेकन लिटरली बिकॉज पॉट इज नॉट इन स्पेस स्पेस इज इन पॉट स्पेस एन विलप्स द पॉट एंड द सो कॉल्ड स्पॉट स्पेस इज ऑल्सो स्पेस नॉन सेपरेट बट सपोजिंग इफ स्पेस फॉर राइटिंग द फिफ्टीन चैप्टर स्पेस कैन से वॉट यू कॉल एज पॉट पॉट स्पेस इज पार्ट ऑफ मी अलोन वॉट कैंड ऑफ अ पार्ट अ पार्ट लेस पार्ट मम एव अंश है जीव लोके एंड वॉट इज इट कॉल्ड जीव भूत है इट इज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ जीवा अलोन ओ बट आई थॉट द जीवा इज टेम्पररी सनातन इट इज देर ऑल द टाइम सनातन सदातन से इन द सेम इट इज इट इज देर ऑल द टाइम इन एन अनचेंजिंग वे दिस लाइट ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस इज देर इन द फॉर्म ऑफ जीवा ओ बट आई थॉट द जीवा डिपार्ट यस द जीवा डेर डिपार्ट बट that light does not depart the body departs the mind departs the senses departs and then what what happens takes on another life then sanatana or gains this knowledge and is worship like as ishvara while alive and is still ishvara after the fall of the body still what does not depart so therefore it is myself only mame mama eva amshah jeeva loke in what form jeeva bhuta sanatana in the form of that which is the jeeva alone how what is this jeeva sanatana jeeva does not come to an end when did the jeeva start no beginning date for the jeeva jeeva is there which is sanatana and even if the person gets uh, self knowledge is worship like ishvara sanatana unchanging same jeeva is there and what is this jeeva myself alone this jeeva is myself alone and it, a, a part is said because otherwise we think ishvara became jeeva ishvara did not become jeeva so therefore that's another reason this part is figuratively mentioned cannot be taken literally because what we are talking of is satchidanandam brahma which does not have parts which cannot have parts and then what happens then we have to bring in this wonderful word which people had trouble uh, pronouncing which one yat yat cha api utkramati ishvarah यक्रामति सो देन सो जीवभूत सनातन एंड देन वॉट हैपन्स टू दिस जीवभूत सनातन दिस जीवा इज इटर्नल एंड देन वेन वेन द बॉडी डिपार्ट वेन द बॉडी डिपार्ट देन वॉट हैपन्स मन षा इंद्रिया द मैंड अलॉंग विथ द five indriyas which makes it six uh, and then what happens the uh, prakriti sthani which means prakriti here is body which is inert remember those qualities of prakriti we saw jada and then what else what are the qualities hmm? prakriti yeah jada what else विकारी सगुण जडा दट इज प्रकृति विच इज वॉट द बॉडी माइंड सेंस कॉम्प्लेक्स सो देन वेन द जीवा डिपार्ट दिस प्रकृति हियर मीन्स द बॉडी अलॉन्ग विथ द माइंड विच इज द सिक्स सेंस एंड देन ऑल द फाइव सेंसेस दे विड्रॉ दे विड्रॉ Utkramati means they withdraw. Who withdraws? Ishvara withdraws. The ruler of this body withdraws. Ishvara withdraws. And then, along with that, all these, uh, all these subtle body withdraws. So, subtle body withdraws. And who is this? 
Ishvara, the jiva here is known as Ishvara. Look at that line. Yachapi Utkramati Ishvara. Ishvara is the ruler of this body, mind, sense complex. This jiva alone is called Ishvara. So when this Ishvara, the baby Ishvara, so to speak, one who doesn't know I am Ishvara, departs from this body, uh, what happens? Pulling, karshati, karshayan, pulling, what? The mind, which is the sixth sense, and the five sense organs, takes it all away. Sanatanaha vai, shariram yat avapnoti, takes on a new body. Who? This Ishvara alone. This Ishvara alone takes on a new body. Suddenly a child is born. Maybe it has wonderful parents, wonderful life. Oh, so nice. <laughs> Great. Or maybe it has a wretched life. Maybe it loses one or both parents and is just made to be like a football between relatives who are showing it some pity and not really taking care of it. Again, sad life. Very sad. Why does this happen? Karma. The order of karma is also included in this subtle body. So according to the karma, this Ishvara goes from one body to the other, dragging along with it, this Ishvara Tattva, dragging along with it the mind and the sense organs and all the subtle things. Takes it. Shariram Yadavapnoti. Then what happens? Grihitva etani. Etani means what? All these things. Which things? The sense organs and the mind. Sanyati goes, moves around, taking all, all these things. Where did all these come from? The last life. Where did the last life mind come from? The life before that. So this mind is what? Very, very, very old. The sense organs which are attracted to the sense objects, very, 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 very old. They have the impressions of so many uh, vasanas, so many samskaras, so many things, which is just amazing and never ending. Really old and then takes on another body and moves like invisibly and effortlessly like the wind. How does the wind move? Just like a breeze, you, you, you don't even, say you kind of sense it and then it's gone. What does it leave in its wake? It has just gone through a sandalwood forest, this wind. And then what does it bring? The gandha, the fragrance of sandalwood it brings to my nostrils and the wind departs just as, just as quickly. Similarly, these jivas along with the body, mind, sense complex, they keep on taking this jiva, no, Ishvara. These Ishwaras which populate the earth, which are nothing other than me, you can say that they are a quote-unquote reflection of me, they are the borrowed Chaitanya, whatever you want you can say, Abhasa, whatever, however you say, then they are, they are all, what do they do? They just move effortlessly like the wind, distributing the fragrance of previous samskaras. This is very well put. The wind does not say, Ayyo, I have to carry all this burden, too much burden. No. Effortlessly it carries, just as effortlessly and easily it carries what? The uh, scents, the fragrance of the gardens and the sandalwood forest. Similarly, this Ishvara in the form of the, that which obtains in the body-mind-sense complex, when it is ready to depart, it departs along with the mind and indriyas, effortlessly. And then what happens? Then it goes to another body and then it moves again effortlessly like the wind carrying with it the fragrance of the, the place that it had just gone to. This is a very, very subtle operation. We just see the, the gross body fall, 
we don't see the subtle body, we don't see it departing, we don't see it coming, we don't see it going from place to place, much less. But there is a very elaborate system happening. Just like when you want to go from one place to another place, what do you do? You hire some movers. What are they called? Packers and movers. So, if we pack, we will just put all the things in boxes and don't do that. Then, be very frustrated and overwhelmed trying to look for the things. But the movers and packers, what do they do? They already come with boxes. One is marked living room. One is marked bedroom. One is marked kitchen. One is marked bathroom. Then they take it all. They drive it in the truck to the new place where you have given them the address. And then what will the movers do? They will take the box marked bathroom into the bathroom. They will take the box marked kitchen into the kitchen, living room, bedroom, etc. Then it's very easy because all the things are already there. So similarly, when the sight, the sight does not depart. The Chaitanya in the form of the sight departs because the Golakas are left behind. And then the box marked Indriyas, <laughs> Shrotra Indriya, Granendriya, it will all be neatly marked. And then that box will empty itself into the new Golakas which are there ready to be opened and for the baby to cry and be ready to see or whatever it does. No one knows how that happens. Just like no one knows how did this wind going through the sandalwood forest bring this fragrance? How did it carry it? Nobody knows. Just like nobody knows how this Ishvara in the form of Jiva lives, takes on a body, drops that body, takes on another body as effortlessly as the moving wind. Nobody knows. Very beautiful, very poetic. And so the Jiva is Ishvara, Mahavakya. Shrotram Chakshus Parshanam Shrotram Chakshus Parshanam Rasanam Granam Evacha Rasanam Granam Vishayanupasevate This I assume is happening in the new body. Yeah. So in the new body, what happens? Shrotram chakshuhu sparshanam rasanam granam. Shrotram means sight, correct? Now, what is shrotram? Ears, hearing, chakshuhu, eyes. Rasanam, tongue, granam, smell. And then, what else will we miss? Sparshanam, touch. Adhishthaya manaha, presided over by the mind. Presided over by the mind, vishayan upasevate. The person enjoys all the various indriyarthas. So now what? The unpacking is complete. <laughs> the sense of touch has been Patted all over the body, okay, this is your place, everywhere. And the eyes have gone into the Golakas, the, the power of sight has gone into the Golakas called eyes. Ears have gone in the correct place, the, the sense of hearing has gone into the right, see, this is a miracle. Supposing the sense of touch was where the eyes should be, we are in a very big problem. And then the eyes would be where the sense of touch is meaning all over. Like Indra's wife, Shachi, she is supposed to have hundred pairs of eyes all over her body. Very inconvenient. And so, uh, so therefore, it's all flawless. The order of this human body is just so flawless. So unpacking everything properly, this Ishvara, Vishayan, Upasevate, the whole jagat becomes a naivetya for which indriyas? Naivetya for the indweller within. 
the colors, the riot of colors, the sights, the sounds, the, uh, the sensations, the experiences, vishayas, all the indriya vishayas, upasevate, it enjoys. How? As I, as this being in the body, as I, who is this I? Ishvara. This Ishvara enjoys this. How is this Ishvara separate from that Ishvara? Not separate at all. It is one with that Ishvara and then it just enjoys. What is the difference? Upadhi is the difference. That's all it is. Upadhi is the difference. There are no two Ishwaras and the Upadhi being Mithya, it is totally, totally and fully discounted. Upadhi is the difference, as though difference. So then Ishvara is enjoying. That is why it is called Yajna. Jnana Yajna it is called. Jnana Indriya Yajna. So the eyes see. We can make it into a fire sacrifice. This becomes a Upasana, a kind of a meditation. You keep looking at something, looking at something and say, first you say, oh it is so wonderful, I, I got lost in it. And then after that you come out of getting lost. When you find yourself, you say, this is Naivedya for the eyes. And who is the eyes? Purusha. In fact, there is one upasana called Akshini Purusha Upasana. Akshini Purusha Upasana means in, in, in we take the dominant eye. What is the dominant eye? If one is right-handed, it will be the right eye. If one is left-handed, you take the left eye. And then behind the eye, you visualize a small Ishvara sitting there behind the eye and that is the eye, that is the Ishvara enjoying everything that there is to see. We make it in the form of a Naivedya, very beautiful Upasana it is. So this is the, the Dakshinakshi Vidya or Akshini Purusha Upasana, same thing. And then, uh, then what happens? Uh, so then Vishayan Upasevate and then uh, Who sees this? How do we know this? This is talked about in the next one. Utkramantam sthitam vapi Utkramantam sthitam vapi Kunjanam va gunantitam Kunjanam va gunantitam Vimudhana nupashyanti Pashyanti Jnana Chakshushaha Pashyanti Jnana Chakshushaha Utkramantam means the departing one. Departing one, Utkramantam. Sthitam means the staying one. So, people generally do not see the departing one. They don't see. You can be at the bedside at the, of somebody who is passing away. They don't see. This is very nicely described in the Chandogya Upanishad. Instructions to Shvetakeli. So, all the Jnatayaha. Jnatayaha means people who are relatives. The relatives have all collected, assembled at the deathbed. This is the, what the Upanishad teaches. All the relatives have assembled at the deathbed. And then there are whispered talks going on. Does he see? <laughs> Does he hear? <laughs> what is he doing? He's just lying there like this? Yeah. And they ask the person, these relatives have travelled from other places. There are some people who are local, they are taking care. They ask the take care, caretakers. How long has he been like this? Oh, three days? Yeah, I'm glad I came. Okay. And then they go close to the person and say, Jana Sima, do you know me? I helped you when you had a difficult time, <laughs> hoping to be in his will. Okay? Yeah, so everybody, everybody says, Kim, Jana Sima, Jana Sima, Jana Sima. And the Upanishad says, Aam, Aam means the person will say yes until such time as the mind does not depart the body. 
and he will drink or she will drink until which time the uh, the what is that the indriyas do not depart the body and so first the uh, the indriyas will draw first speech will draws jana simam jana simam they will not be able to talk they may go like this or they may go like this some sign language speech withdraws speech withdraws where vang manasi so the speech withdraws in the mind the mind withdraws in avyakta the, the sense organs withdraw into the mind mind withdraws into avyakta avyakta resolves into purusha this we just did today another iteration of the same thing hmm yeah yada panchavatishthante jnanani manasasah buddhishtana buddhishtana vicheshtati tamahu paramangatim and so this is the uh, this is the order of the withdrawal how the boxes are closing 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 packing up is going on we don't see it nobody understands it but there are certain signs and there are medical signs also if a doctor is visiting in the hospice or wherever it is they will say okay bring all the relatives just few hours left they know because of some things are not working multi organ failure kidneys are not functioning liver is not functioning all these things there are certain scientific signs but nobody knows exactly sometimes one can uh, surprise the doctors and continue to live for a long time or sometimes nothing is wrong the person just doesn't just suddenly goes that is also there and so utkramantam whether the person is leaving or whether the person is deciding to stay where very few people know and then gunjanam va gunanvitam gunjanam means the person is enjoying all these things remaining in the body experiencing the things why with uh, how how experiencing it experiencing it along with the gunas certain things one finds rajasic certain things one finds stimulating certain things one finds tamasic and indulgent certain thing one finds sattvic so endowed by the gunas experiences the world that also the people don't see generally speaking and the person leaving the body also much less people see and who are these people vimudhaha na anupashyanti the people who are uh, who, who are end, who, who don't see this are called vimudhaha the deluded ones do not see either the arrival or the departure of the jiva in the body and the deluded one also does not see the person enjoying all the things as a naivedya bhoga in this body who sees the one endowed with the eyes of knowledge what kind of knowledge vedanta where the mantras have been the upanishad mahavakya mantras the maha mantras have been tattooed on the eyeball <laughs> that is called gnana chakshu that is the person who sees meaning the one the person who is one with the shastra only that person sees <laughs> pashyanti gnana chakshu sah and then further developing that same idea yatanto yoginas chainam yatanto yoginas chainam pashyantyatmanya vasthitam pashyantyatmanya vasthitam yatanto pyakritatmanah yatanto pyakritatmanah nainam pashyantya chetasah kinds of people are putting the effort one is the yogi here what kind of yogi karma yogi first and then gyana yogi yogi here means not just karma yogi and gyana yogi but the one who is enjoying the phala of karma yoga and gyana yoga in the form of viveka vairagya bhukshutvam etc yatantah means the striving yogis the striving people two kinds of people are striving the yogis and the bhogis okay the yogis are striving 
पश्यन्ति आत्मनि अवस्थितम् एनम् पश्यन्ति सी व्हाट दिस ईश्वरा obtaining in the body mind sense complex see this ishvara see within quotes see this ishvara in the form of i the truth and the content of this i aishvara okay this i is ishvara they understand that why because they have made the right effort and of course adi shankara commenting on this and similar verses in the bhagavad gita will say acharya Shastra Prasadat, Deva Prasadat, Atma Prasada. Four kinds of Anugraha are talked about. Ishvara Anugraha, Daiva Anugraha it is called. Ishvara's grace must be there in the form of Punya to come to the Shastra and not misunderstand the Shastra etc. And then uh, that interest should be there, not just go off after one, one class, say, okay, enough, been there, done that, finished. That, that staying power, it's all Ishvara's grace. Then we talk of the second kind of grace, Shastra's grace. The Shastra has to open herself to me. Why? Because I have an open mind and I choose to know. Tamevesha Vrinute, Tameva Esha Vrinute, then what is that? Tasyaiva Atma Vibrinute Tanumsma, Yamevesha Vrinute, Tena Tasyaiva Atma Vibrinute Tanumsma, Kathopanishad. The Atma reveals itself to those that who choose it exclusively. And so choose it exclusively means have that Viveka and Vairagya to catch hold of that. And so this is called Shastra Kripa. The Shastra reveals itself to me. The Shruti reveals herself to me. Reveals the purport. Reveals the, the, the nuances. Reveals the, the Vidya along with the Prakriyas to me. Then Acharya Kripa. Acharya Kripa means the Acharya takes me as the disciple takes one as the disciple and decides to teach until when, until the knowledge comes. This is called Shastra Kripa. And this is what it says in the Puranas everywhere. Uh, the person did seva to the Guru until the Guru was pleased. It's not that the Guru has to be pleased. Guru is always pleased. Pleased here means knows that you are ready for this knowledge. That is what pleased means. And then Mm. Shastra Kripa, then all this will, in order to activate these the three Kripas, I need Atma Kripa. All the resistances, fears, everything I need to be able to drop and I need to be able to surrender to this knowledge that is called, I need to be able to be in a place of recipe, as a recipient, then it will work. So these yogis endowed fully with these four kinds of Kripas, they come to know what? This Ishvara, who is the Atmastha, who is the Self, who is the Atma obtaining in the Buddhi, they know that as Ishvara. Whereas, Yatantaha Api, even though striving, obviously in the wrong way we have to see, Akritatmanaha, Akritatmanaha means that the, the, the uh, Akritatmanaha means, Krita means fulfilled, Akrita means unfulfilled. Too many ragadveshas, too many things, too many irons in the fire, too many priorities. And Atma, Brahman is one more small priority. It doesn't work. Does not work. Too many conflicting, competing, coexisting priorities where one is thinking that Brahman is yet one more thing to be mastered along with so many other things. That's not the truth. In fact, mastering of the self he means knowing everything all at once. That they don't know. They think Brahman is one more thing to be known. Akritatmanaha and then the one more word is there, achetasaha. Literally achetasaha means those that do not have a heart. Heartless ones. <laughs> no. That means here immature. Heart is there but it hasn't grown up. Alpartha nanj, immature, not fully grown up. 
not you know little bit of viveka is there but not full blown viveka is not there and so therefore they don't come to know in spite of trying trying how trying in their own ways they, they don't come to know and some people because they have pursued this knowledge come to know so now again the is going to be a change because from the description of the jiva as ishvara we are going to see the jagat as non separate from ishvara from verses 12 to 16 or something like that we will see that in tonight heavy schedule 6:30 please be here for swami vidyatmananda ji's lecture and uh, it is seen as a mark of respect to, to arrive before the teacher so i would like everybody to be assembled here at 6:25 and then so that it is in an orderly way you know, we can be chanting something or doing something okay yeah. or sitting quietly that's also okay and so that that will go up to dinner time 7:30 quick dinner 8:15 Uh, or if he goes sometimes he goes a little longer in which case uh, you can come for satsang at uh, 8:20 8:25 om purna lav purna midam purna purna mudachyate purnasya purna madaya purna meva vashishyate om shanti 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 hari Of chocolates that is for Swamiji to give out to everybody.